Hello children, welcome back to the class again. We have already discussed about the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Today we are discussing an experiment to prove anaerobic respiration. Experiment to prove anaerobic respiration occurs in yeast occurs in yeast ok to prove that anaerobic respiration occurs in yeast what can we do first let us write the formula for anaerobic respiration glucose C6 H12O6 converts into ethanol carbon dioxide and heat in absence of oxygen in absence of oxygen so we need to prove that we need to provide a condition in which glucose gets uh, sorry yeast gets glucose but it does not gets oxygen we need to provide that condition and we need to check that these three products are obtained that is our uh, purpose here so, what can we do for that? How can we test carbon dioxide is produced? We have a test for carbon dioxide. What is the test for carbon dioxide? It can turn lime water to milky. Heat, we can just put the thermometer and check is whether there is a raise in temperature or not. Ethanol, ethanol is alcohol and it has a very bad smell, pungent smell. So, by smelling the resultant components we should understand whether it is alcohol or not ok how can we provide an oxygen free environment and glucose to yeast for this we will take a beaker we will take glucose solution in that glucose plus water and we will heat this we will heat this contents and whatever oxygen is dissolved inside this whatever oxygen is dissolved in this glucose it gets evaporated ok oxygen will be evaporated and only the glucose and water will remain which is not having any oxygen so this can be poured in a thermos flask this can be poured into a thermos flask And there is a test for oxygen also if you want to check before performing this experiment itself oxygen is completely evaporated or not you can put few drops of Janus green bee solution Janus green bee solution is a bluish green color solution it is also called as diagen green this solution should be added to this glucose solution one or two drops not more if it turns into pink color then there is no oxygen in this solution after that it can be added to this thermos thermos flask why are we taking in a thermos flask because the heat generated by this experiment should not be liberated out if you take it in a beaker the heat there is a chance that heat will be lost so if you don't want that to happen you should take it in a thermos flask close it with a rubber cock which is having two holes in one hole you are fixing the thermometer in one hole you are fixing thermometer in this in second hole we will fix a tube that is connected to lime water a small water bath containing lime water this is also fitted with rubber cock So this tube is connected from here to here we should also be careful that this tube is inserted into the liquid both thermocol as well as a tube should be inserted into the liquid ok but one thing before uh, this what do you say rubber cork is fitted we need to add one layer of 
paraffin wax here paraffin wax is a liquid wax which does not allow the contact between the glucose solution and atmosphere this prevents the further entry of oxygen molecules into this solution okay so what did we do we boiled the glucose solution and we checked if oxygen is present in this or not then we put this glucose solution into thermos flask and we put one layer of paraffin wax over this we connected a rubber cork with thermometer as well as a tube that rubber cork is fixed to this thermos flask and this tube is extended into another small bottle that is containing lime water okay we need to leave this set up for 4 to 5 hours at a temperature 37 degrees celsius okay this is a suitable temperature for conducting this experiment if it is uh, if you leave this at a lower temperature then you need to keep it for 2 or 3 days so if you uh, take this uh, experiment at 37 degree celsius this experiment completes in 4 to 5 very suitable for the growth of yeast yeast should multiply you are adding only a small amount of yeast to do this so that yeast should multiply okay so that we need this temperature of 37 degree celsius we need this we need to leave this setup for 4 to 5 hours after 4 to 5 hours what can we see we'll see this lime water turns to milky this lime water turns to milky there is a raise in temperature raise in temperature and we can see when you smell when you remove this uh, uh, rubber cork and smell this liquid you get a pungent smell so these three tests prove that anaerobic respiration occurred in uh, what do you say yeast cells okay next we will see respiration in plants how does respiration occur in plants we all know that uh, stomata are present on the lower side of leaf the help in exchange of gases in plants in this way respiration occurs but in autumn season when there is a complete leaf fall how does the plant respire so for this this type of conditions when there are no leaves plants have another type of holes that are present on stems these holes that are present on stem are called as lenticels and lenticels also help in exchange of gases exchange of gases how this exchange of gas occurs why carbon dioxide enters into body or why oxygen leaves into the body of plants we'll see whether let us take stomata so above the stomata we have seen that there are air spaces the cells that are present to this uh, adjacent to this air spaces have already used up the carbon dioxide present in them here the carbon dioxide is used up so these cells will have very less amount of carbon dioxide in them all these cells have a layer of water around them this is because of capillary action all the cells that are present in plants have a layer of water around them when the carbon dioxide inside the cell is used up the carbon dioxide that is present here will be taken by the cells not directly this carbon dioxide dissolves in this film of 
water that is around the cells from there carbon dioxide will enter cell wall have small small pores we all know that plasmodesmata or the holes that are present in the cell walls directly through the cell wall holes that are present in the cell walls this carbon dioxide enters into this uh, cell along with the water in which it is dissolved now this is the area where carbon dioxide is less and compared to the carbon dioxide in the surroundings okay now carbon dioxide enters from this external environment through stomata into this air spaces so what is the pathway that carbon dioxide follows is from outside it enters into uh, air spaces present inside whether it is lenticels or whether it is stomata they have air spaces around the holes through uh, this stom openings whether it is lenticels or stomata through the opening air enters ox carbon dioxide enters from outside into air spaces from there it dissolves in the layer of water that surrounds the cells and through the cell uh, holes that are present in the cell wall they enter into the cells and in the same pathway oxygen that is present inside the cells is returning from cells to layer of water that is present over the cells from there to air spaces that are present just behind the stomata or lenticels from there to the release outside okay this occurs in the daytime when plant is performing photosynthesis in night time when plant performs respiration the process is reverse oxygen enters inside and carbon dioxide leaves this is about normal plants any uh, plant that is in terrestrial areas but let us uh, what happens in plants that are present in marshy areas marshy areas those plants which are present in marshy areas also need respiration so respiration occurs in every part of plant roots seeds fruits leaves only photosynthesis photosynthesis occurs only in the leaf region remaining all plants perform very less rate of respiration in day time in night time it respires normally okay so in day time this less amount of respiration is required for the production of energy by these uh, parts of the plant so roots of the plant also requires that little amount of oxygen for respiration processes so normally soil contains some amount of uh, air air is present inside the soil so normally all plants take respire uh, they respire through the air that is present in the soil but plants which are present in marshy areas cannot take because this uh, water is completely loaded with water inside this soil so there is no chance for root respiration what does these marshy plants do like mangroves for example if you take Ma mangroves form aerial roots this roots come outside like this okay or the roots are above the soil like this they grow above the soil these are anchoring roots anchoring roots will be present below the soil the main purpose of roots is anchoring so the part of the root that is present below the soil helps in anchoring that is fixing itself into the ground firmly and part of the root that is above the soil will help in exchange of gases like this <coughs> or some of the roots will grow out of the soil like this so these all roots that are found above the soil are called as aerial roots aerial roots this type of roots which look like knees of human beings are called as knees or nematophores nematophores because they are held their their function is very similar to lungs okay so that is why they are called as nematophores 
this is one thing how ma uh, plants live in this is one way by which uh, plants living in marshy areas can respire there is an another alternative plants which grow in marshy areas have air spaces that continue from lenticels to roots i told you already in stem region there are lenticels and there are some air gaps like this this air gaps ends up here for any lenticel but in case of plants which are found in marshy areas so this is a root area this gap is not ending there itself but it enters till the root so this gap is continuous so this is a lenticel here there is an air space this air space continues till root area and the air that is exchanged near the lenticel region itself passes to the root so in this way it helps in respiration respiration of roots so what did we uh, understand from respiration in plants normal respiration occurs through stomata first thing next stem have lenticels for respiration and respiration occurs because of presence of air spaces as well as there is a water layer around the uh, cells that help in exchange of gases in case of plants that are present in marshy areas they have either aerial roots or they have uh, air spaces that are continuous from stem to root that help in exchange of gases okay children in our next class we'll discuss about the other experiments that are related to respiration